Hey guys, I'm here at the 2023 World of Wheels with Mr. Bordelon and his beautiful 1972 Gran Torino Sport. Mr. Bordelon, talk me through some of the some of the interesting stories about your car. Well, it is a 1972 Gran Torino Sport. I bought it from a friend of mine in 1977. He actually bought it brand new in 1972. We've been good friends our whole life. And when he bought the car, uh, I fell in love with it and I wanted to buy it from him the day he bought it and kept bugging him for years and finally he sold it to me in 1977. And uh, it was kind of my everyday car, uh, going, going to work and stuff like that. And later on, once I got some work trucks, I was able to play around with it. It used to be uh, silver with a black bottom on top laser straight, that's how the Torino's come, and uh, you know, I decided to paint it years ago and then I redid it back in uh, 2000. Uh, we did the whole car, uh, so we painted it black, took the vinyl top off, did a lot of custom stuff and things like that. But before I redid it, uh, a few years before that, I was doing some drag racing with it after I blew up two motors and stuff on the side of the car do a little bit more shows with it. So now I have one of the car shows, cruise uh, around from the New Orleans area, cruise around to different cruise nights, uh, hey, uh, local uh, car uh, shows, uh, just have a blast. You uh, remember the group? There's one car to drive, it's air conditioned automatic power steering, nice stereo system in it, and I don't know if it's a street driver and also show pretty good. Can you talk me through the uh, the current engine? I know you mentioned you've blown up two other engines. What's what's the current engine you have in this car? Talk me through some of that the specs it's on that. It's not the original engine. It did uh, originally come with a 351 Cleveland two barrel motor, and that's what's in it now. I kept the same style motor. It's not a matching numbers car. The same as original transmission, original rear end, and stuff like that. Actually, the interior has been changed. It used to be a bench seat. I went to a bucket seat to put a console and stuff like that in it. They have changed a lot to be able to customize it. That's awesome. Well, let's, if you don't mind, uh, I'd love to get a closer look at the engine and uh, we can look inside the car and you can talk me through. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, what you're looking at is the engine. Uh, I, everything, a lot of chrome. I'm about to say, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of chrome on it. Uh, me and a friend, you know, built a couple of motors for it. I basically, I built the car, put everything together. Uh, got a lot of stuff chrome, bought some chrome stuff, and, you know, underneath, and just continually adding something, you know, to make it pretty. It is, it is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And let's walk in, do you mind if we walk around yeah, inside and you can show me the inside of the car? Um, the, uh, the interior is a vinyl. Oh, wow. A vinyl with the uh, cloth inserts. I, if you got a good shot of the, the dash, I customized the dash years ago. I took the old air conditioning system out, put a vintage air, air conditioning system in it, and that's all tucked up underneath the dash. Once I had to take that all apart, I decided to change all the gauges. That's a gauge pack that I built myself, the air conditioning controls, uh, the steering wheel I've been having for a while. But actually, the seats that you see and these panels on the side, the, grid, or the whole interior was done, a friend of mine, that's probably almost a almost a 30 year old interior that she wow did. so nowadays a lot of the show cars use you know a lot of leather they use a lot of leather but this was done almost 30 years ago the interior and then i wanted a little bit of gray to break up the black uh so that's why we went with the tweed and the girl that did my interior for me you know she was real good with interior work so she she sewed the door panels that you're probably showing and you can see those lines in it she sewed it just like the factory stitch wow the seats like i said it was a bench seat i got i found some torino bucket seats put them in she redid them redid the back seats also did the luggage traded call in the back to match that's back here and then also the trunk we did the trunk 
nothing super fancy, just a little panel I got with my spare tires. You see there's vinyl on the sides, probably kind of hard to see in the dark. It's very large, very space. Have you ever taken this car on a trip? Uh, not really. It, yeah. You know, yeah, you can fit people in there, but you could know, <laughs> you could put luggage in there. But I did move the spare tire a different room where, than where it was, the factory stuff. If you look at a factory Torino, you're going to see a lot of things that I changed differently. Well, would you mind closing the uh, the trunk and the hood just so we can get some of the lines of the car? Oh, okay. With the uh, with the the hood and the trunk closed. Uh, Thank you. I just just to see it in the way it is. Wow. It's not all the way closed because I got an electric trunk release. That's totally fine. Uh, and we can move and around. The battery's disconnected. The rules in the ISCA is the batteries need to be disconnected. So all we need power to turn it back on. I understand. Well, we we don't have to close the 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 hood if that's if it's okay. the same there. But, you know, when I did the car, uh, if you zero in with your camera up in here, there's usually body lines here and up here uh, that are from the factory. That's all been welded uh, and, and we seamed the car. We call it. I took all the seams out. Same thing with the trunk. This is all smooth here where on a normal car they have a seam. Uh, it's hard to see on your camera probably because a lot of it's dark. But, uh, wow. The bumper, you know, redone, re-chromed, I took a uh, front and rear bumper. They used to be bumperettes right about here. I took them off and welded the holes up. And in the old school way of some of the cars uh, in the 70s, they had little slots about right here where the jack would go. So I welded that up. Uh, and then, of course, had it all re-chromed. Uh, it looks incredible. Thank you, thank you. And the lines of the car, it, it's just absolutely beautiful. And obviously these rims were not stock. No, no. Are no. you rocking uh, bigger rims? Yes. Larger tires? 18 inch on the front, 20s in the back. Wow. That's, that's a, a Bosch rim, deep dish, chrome mags. They kind of fit. And they both kind of wide tires. I like to fill the wheel well up. And of course now you can see my signs. It's gotten my name on it and so where I'm from, from Destrehan, Louisiana. My name's Justin Bordelon and it's got the 351 Cleveland engine and thanking some friends of mine that helped me work on it. Uh, different names on there, the painter that painted, I didn't actually paint the car. Uh, so I had someone paint it, I also had uh, you know, the girl do the interior. Then I had somebody else wrap the dash. I mean, I had some help along the way. Uh, but most of the work taking it apart and putting it together was by me. That's incredible. And I do have to say, I got my son that works for me and my, my air conditioning in business in New Orleans. And uh, he helped me put the car together. So he had yeah. a big part of it. You, know? you must be very proud. Oh, yeah. I'm proud, proud of all my kids. You know, proud of him helping me. And... Uh, because you know, when you're putting together brand new painted stuff, you need hands, you need somebody to hold it to bolt stuff up, and one person can't do it. And you put it together in a very, it's yeah, very beautiful together, example. Good. All the bolts and stuff that I use are all stainless steel everywhere, uh, except for some of the chassis stuff, it has to be a different bolt. Is there anything else you uh, interesting or any stories that you would like to share about the car additionally to what you've already said? Uh, no, it just, it, it's, it's just been in, in the family. In, in my possession since 1977. It's, That's uh, incredible. Yeah. And I don't plan on selling it. No. Uh, I like to do some car shows like this every now and then. And I also like to cruise, drive it. Uh, we go out to the lakefront, uh, Lake Poncha train on weekends sometimes. Just take a cruise out there. You know, nice weather. It's a nice weather car. Of course, I got caught in the rain a few times. It's got working windshield wipers, air conditioning, automatic power steering, everything works on it. And it's, it's a drivable car. I would, you know, if I had to drive it, you know, hundreds of miles. I do drive it sometimes, but I do trailer it sometimes too. I do do cruising the coast. I'm from the New Orleans.
Owens area, we go to the coast, which is from uh, Bay St. Louis all the way to Biloxi. And that's uh, the first week in October. I usually do that with a whole bunch of my friends. Got a lot of friends in a car club that we in. That's the uh, Ford Performance Association down in the New Orleans area. It's a big Ford, Ford club where, you know, we do all kind of events and stuff. But we enjoy our cars. That's what it's all about. Well, Mr. Bordelon, I really appreciate you taking the time. Your Grand Torino is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And I, I know you're just so proud of the build that you've, you've put together. And I'm glad you can show it off at World of Wheels in 2023. Good. Yeah. Thank you again for your time, and I hope you have a great rest of your convention. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nice meeting you.